thank you again. And uh, in my language, we say shalak dain. That means uh, all my relation. And um, uh, when we first started out, like Clarence was saying, that we were vi minority out of Alaska. So I'm going to start from the history on down to, you know, try to explain uh, the whole uh, the area we're uh, representing and from Alaska and as whole as a uh, indigenous uh, point of view where I'm involved and 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 how I got started and I was born in um, Fort Yukon because they had a hospital there then and my my parents my uh, father and mother they raised me on the land we left off the land and up to 13 years old I didn't know how to talk English and then they, I had to be sent to a boarding school. And um, it was new to me. I mean, I didn't know what I learned out in a, living off the land based on uh, needs, not on creed. And when I seen creed, I didn't know the meaning of it. And I didn't know the TV. I didn't know uh, anything that was outside of the life I, uh, that I was raised on. And uh, at one time when I was very young, I was dressed in caribou clothing from head to toe to stay warm in the middle of the winter. And I could stay out there all day long during the 70 below and not get cold. And it provided me with that kind of clothing. And it didn't cost us anything. We went hunt and fish and uh, and my father's trapper never had to work for, never had to work eight hours a day. And my father's a craftsman, and so is my mom. And uh, they, she, she trapped, they, he trapped, and then my mom sews, and that's how we could buy here every year. So from the time I was born, I learned how to protect the uh, environment. And I probably, uh, and die protecting the environment. That's how the Indian, Indian is gifted that way, naturally. They were born uh, to protect the environment and we're, we're gonna die protecting the environment. And um, another way that they say that we don't belong here, and mainly in Alaska, is that they say that we came over from the Bering Street, that just another way they trying to tell us that we don't belong here. But uh, none of the elders told us a story that we came over from the Bering Street. They always tell us that we came from the land and we go back to the land. In fact, in our language we say uh, none, that means land. And the same very word for none is you too. We say you, we say none. And we say land none. We say we use that same word. So uh, that's how we look at things. Indian religion is not something that is magic or a secret. Indian Indian religion is uh, that uh, to protect environment, protect air, water, land, and life. The four um, four uh, things that uh, life depend on. And in order to take care of it, we have to take care of it in order to, to, take, care, uh, to take care of us. So it's really up, up to us. Right now, everybody breathes the same air, so we're all in it together. Um, another major problem right now, as it is, is the ozone layer, the whole up north, uh, uh, North Pole, it's more, more leaning over to Greenland, but uh, there is hole there, and they even uh, tested for uh, radiation in Greenland, and it is there. It's going to get to Arctic uh, region, and it, uh, my people is going to get it first. Eventually, it's going to come down here. Right now, today, there is snowing in Fairbanks. That's very unusual when I came yesterday. I mean, May is summer for uh, Fairbanks, and it's snowing. And we go through very changes of weather. We go through neither cold spill, we go, go through drought, we go through cold spill and uh, heat waves. 
that, that due to the uh, global warming, and the reason we're getting it worse up there is because all the pollution from all the other industrial area in this world collects up there because the air is cold and it stays up in the air longer before it falls and, and that eaten up at the low ozone layer. And um, at this um, Brazil, we, I like to see a major, uh, a concrete decision made to change and what causing, you know, the chemical that causes it uh, um, to eat up at that ozone layer have to be stopped. The DuPont company have to be closed down. <laughs> and um, I, I mean, uh, what I mean is that we have to, uh, as global uh, uh, unity, we have to uh, pass a law just like uh, having a stop sign. Across the world, a stop sign is there and everybody and stop at that stop sign. That kind of law we have to make to cut down on the pollution. And I like to see that concrete change at that uh, uh, Earth Summit. Nothing like all these years they said by 1999 or by 19 so, so and so will cut down so much percent in um, this pollution, that pollution. But nobody, oh, nobody look into those things. It's just only what they show on the paper and usually what they show on the paper is what, what looks good on the paper. So that's a major one. When, when the Gujarat nation took a stand against the oil company in Alaska, we were very minority. People, people said we were crazy. People said uh, Alaska people are rich. All they're sitting around is uh, waiting for the next oil check, which is not true. And when we took the stand, um, nobody was on our side. Nobody took our stand. And we didn't know where to go. We didn't know where to face, where to go, or what to do. So nobody was listening to us. So we went back and studied about our our people. Goes when we went way back as far as 150 years. How did they take care of the problem then? Then they call all all the Kuchen together, and which we did back 1988 in June. 5 to 11, we call the uh, which a nation together. We call all the elders together in Arctic village, and they talk three days in our language. We threw away a Western type agenda. <laughs> and for three days, we talk in our language, and the, the elders took turn up there. There's no uh, order was t took place. Elders took over, and, and at the end, they they, uh, the major thing to protect was the caribou because we're a caribou people. If it wasn't for caribou, we won't be here today. Because even though Gujarat Nation is the last um, Indian nation to be contacted by so-called Columbus discovery, um, we used to be a 100,000 healthy, uh, uh, safe nation, a strong nation before uh, Columbus. But today, there's only 10,000 of us. Even though we're the last one to be contacted by Columbus discovery because they came in through the Arctic Ocean by boat. They came through the Yukon. You, they, ca they came in through Yukon River, and we kind of caught in between there. But then, uh, even then, you know, uh, um, is it, it, still going on because um, the, the, the only reason we uh, pull through was because the caribou. And the caribou migrate through our country over to northwest Canada and northeast Alaska. And there is a border between us, but we're the same nation, same language, same caribou, same um, relatives across the border. 
And uh, there are 17 villages that took a stand against the development of an Arctic coastal plain, which call Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, or they call it 1002 in legal turn. And it's really up to the state of uh, um, the whole 50 state. It's not only up to Alaska. So last year, since then, we went out and when the elders gave us direction, they told us to go out and educate these people that don't know what we mean. Another thing is that to protect the caribou, to protect our language, to protect our, to do something about our border, free passage, and alcohol problem. There's four things that they direct us to uh, better and, and work on. And, and uh, the, uh, the very reason they came together is to protect the caribou. And it comes to show on the map that uh, where the caribou migrate for food reason or migrate through their wintering, that's just where the uh, which end villages are located. And this one red part way up on the top, that's where they calf every year, and that's where they want to do gas and oil development. Oh. Yeah. And um, um, it's not only because we want to, um, uh, it's not only for caribou, it's not only for which and to survive. It's a whole ecosystem we're trying to protect too because it still works there. There's a ducks and birds that comes up from the tip of South America that nest there every spring. It's a safe and clean place here yet. And that's where they go. If that get polluted, it, there's no way it can go back to it was before because it took 3,000 years to build up a fertile ground in, in the tundra. And if you destroy that one day, that means you destroy a fertile ground, fertile soil that built up last 3,000 years. So, so for so many reasons we took that stand because uh, we can we can use that to protect the uh, Arctic uh, ozone layer hole, to cut down on that, and we're still left off the land like the Clarence was saying. And right now, the state of Alaska, uh, the economy goes up and down along the, with the price of oil go up and down. That's, that's how they control Alaska. So they're taking the lumber, m minerals, oil, uh, fish out of Alaska as fast as they can take it out. If we don't stop it now, if we, if we don't stop, if we don't take a stand on one thing there, it's going to be gone before we know it. And that's what's what happening. And then they put this in, uh, there's a five different tribe in Alaska. And um, within that, uh, Alaska, they put, they put about 13 different regions, profit-making corporation, native, that's when the land claim passed. So all these is profit-making corporation. They're not, they don't have the title to the land. And the Indian people in Alaska got the highest suicide rate, alcohol-related death across the nation, they got the highest one because it looks like under that Land Claim Settlement Act that passed 1970, don't have the, they don't have a way to a tie to a land. In order to hold on to their land, they have to be a profit-making corporation. They gotta be making money. And that's what's going on in Alaska. But some of the which in villages on US side are in with Alaska land claim, some are not. But they took, they took a stand against the development, which is proof that uh, we, uh, we, you know, that they even took a stand against their own corporation to protect the caribou and what, and what the life they believe in. And so, in that sense, I I, I can bring a broader uh, reason to um, the whole United Nation from North to South America, from Alaska to South America, because um, I've been um, involved with indigenous group from uh, South America, Central America, and US and Canada. And I'm on that um, 1992, 1992 and beyond, or 500 years and, um, and beyond uh, committee. 
and also uh, I'm with the International Indian Treaty Council. So I'm involved in, in, in broader place and I, I can bring that issue to the United Nations and recognize the Indian as the Indian people of the Western Hemisphere and um, as, um, uh, because uh, we're no different from how we believe and how we do things. And I believe if we come together, we will uh, get a seat at the United Nations or um, we can have our own uh, United Nations um, seat. So there's many ways I can address um, indigenous point of view at United Nations. And uh, I'm about to do that. I've been uh, um, committed to do this. My people and the elders uh, chose me to represent the, uh, I'm the chairperson to the Gujan Steering Committee. There's, it's made up of four representatives from Canada and four from US. And they gave us this direction to do so. So, uh, and that's how we organize ourselves. And, and last year, we went and um, educate. We did. We do slideshow across the nation. We do a lot of uh, attending of conference. We do a lot of radio, TV, newspaper, and everything with very little, little money. But it came to show that as a grassroots people, people like us here tonight, that we can come together because it came to show that we did defeat the energy committee last year and we voted down because as a grassroots people we came together and, uh, and uh, made it happen and I think we still have a power as a people to continue to do that. Like Clarence was saying, to kill other five people and I think we can accomplish a lot just by sticking together and fight for what we believe in. Masicho, thank you.